So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about how you're not going to self-sabotage yourself when it comes to your goals and your diet. And instinctively, we have something inside of us that we gotta say no to. Because there's times where we're just gonna do what we wanna do and our brain tells us that we shouldn't, but yet we override it, do it, and regret it, and then rinse and repeat it. And so in today's video, I'm gonna give you six different ways that you're gonna be able to not self-sabotage yourself. The first one is being mindful of what you're doing. You're going to prepare and you're going to stop allowing yourself to celebrate when it destroys your goals. So if you're looking for somebody to hold you accountable, let's say that you know what you need to do, but you just need somebody to tell you that, hey, you need to not do that and you need to do this, then go to our website, www.fitclub.fit. So the first thing you need to do is be mindful of every single bite. And I'm gonna tell you to put a filter between you and eating. And the more filters that you have, then the less likely you're going to eat. Or in our case of sabotaging yourself, overeating. And so the filters that I would tell you to apply are going to be things like tracking your food. Now, when you're out for dinner, it's impossible for you to be able to track everything. Now, some of the better restaurants will have their food in MyFitnessPal. They'll have it verified. It's usually the bigger chains that have this kind of things. So you would be able to track the food that you're eating into your fitness tracker, and then you're gonna be able to tell if you're going over the calories that you're burning based on the watch that you have. So the first filter that I would tell you is that you need to track everything. And if you can track it, that's one line of filter. The second line of filter is being able to look at your watch and knowing how many calories that you burn for a day. Now, it doesn't have to be like that long term, but in the case of going out to eat or going out to a party, you need to look at, okay, my steps are crap. The amount of calories that I burn are crap. So that means that I cannot eat crap. So that's your second filter, is that did you actually earn it? And the third filter I would tell you is to take a minute and reflect on the food that you're about to eat. Give thanks for the sacrifices that were made for it and then take the time before you just inhale all your food. So one, have the fitness tracker. Two, have your watch as an indicator whether you earned it or not. And three, take a minute, look at your food and reflect and be grateful. The second major tip that I'd tell you is that you need to prepare. So you need to have your food prepared in your food tracker. You need to have your food pre-planned and your snacks in the fridge or into your lunch bag. Now me, I'm always on the go and you're probably the same. So most people are now back to work and you have very busy days where if you're a busy mom, you probably went to the gym in the morning, then you went home quickly, got the kids ready, and then you went to work. And then after that, you've either got the gym again or you're off to kids things or whatever you've got. So there isn't a lot of time that you're actually going to be at the house and being able to have the exact same scheduled time to eat. And so the thing that you need to do is to have these things planned the night before in your fitness tracker. And again, if you're new to this, we teach this in our course, The Belly Burn. But if you've been with us for a while, then you know exactly what I'm talking about of pre-planning your food. At least if you pre-plan your food, it's like pre-planning your day, there's less likely the chance of you falling off. So plug your food in and then whatever you plan to eat, make sure that you've got that prep the night before. You don't ne necessarily need to cook the day of, but at least if you can cook the food the night before and then just reheat it the day after and have a couple high protein snacks available, then the chances of you falling off are slim. Because why? We only tend to overeat or eat the bad foods when we're in extreme hunger. But if we had the food prepped and we have the food near us, then guess what? You're going to eat the food that you have and then you're gonna have less temptations to wanna to overeat because why? You're not hungry because you're fed with the proper food sources. So preparation is key. And then the third one is that you need to stop allowing yourself to celebrate in a way that destroys your goals, okay? So if you did a belly burn challenge and you went 28 days of strict nutrition, working out consistently and you drop 12 to 20 pounds like most people in the belly burn do that are super dedicated to it and they have that weight to lose. And then right after they finish their weigh-in, they're immediately taking shooters, 
they're eating candy, they're snacking down all these like muffins and then they go for lunch and then they have a dinner and then they do it again on a Sunday and then Monday rolls around and they don't prepare, they didn't put anything into their MyFitnessPal and they're just kind of free base eating and then the results that we had gotten in those 28 days are completely gone. And so what ends up happening is if you've been a fat gainer, okay, so what does that mean? Is that the fat accumulates and grows, okay? We weren't always this size. If we were looking at ourselves when we were 12 years old, then you know we've progressively gotten bigger and the fat cells have accumulated and gotten bigger. And so what ends up happening is we just kind of shrink and grow the same fat cells. Now, if you weren't in a constant state of burning, meaning that if you weren't constantly losing 10 to 15 pounds, from the 50 or 60 that you gained from when you were like 18, then what ends up happening is the fat is super susceptible because it's like, okay, well right now we're in the phase, the first phase of shrinking. But then we go and do this like crazy week where we just like go off the rails and we're going nuts with the eating. And then what ends up happening is the fat will rebound just as fast. And so we have to be aware that yes, we went hard for 28 days or whatever length it was, and it's okay to celebrate, but we have to know when the celebration ends. So what would I tell you? Put your celebration food and drinks into your MyFitnessPal tracker. Make sure that they fit within the calories that your coach gives you or that you've been on that has been successful for you and stick to that. You can do 1800 calories of straight garbage if you want, but stay under 1800 calories. But when it comes to garbage food, all the calories all add up. So remember guys, be mindful of every bite that you do. Prepare in advance for the things that you're going to eat. And then if you have success, don't let your success override the hard work that you've put in. I'm Coach RJ. If you're looking to get belly burn coached up or you're looking for that next phase of your fitness journey, then hit us up on www.fitclub.fit.